Tom Horner, how do we approve today's business climate? Well, first of all, I absolutely agree that we need tax reform. We do need to allow businesses to make investments in research and development for small manufacturers to have the ability to purchase capital equipment without having to pay sales tax, to reduce the corporate income tax. Eventually, I'd like to get to not just taxing small businesses, but give those sub S, LLCs and others the, the opportunity to hold back some of their earnings, retain it in the company so that they have the money for investment. But here's the problem, Representative Emmer, is that on one hand you say, don't worry, revenues are going to grow, we'll just grow our way out of this mess. And then you turn around and say, but we need to cut taxes. You can't use the same dollar several times over. You can only use the dollar once, unless you put it into the private sector and they leverage it. That's what my proposal does. So do I want to raise taxes? Of course not. Who likes to pay taxes? Do we need to raise taxes as a responsible measure of leadership so that we can reduce taxes in the areas that are going to leverage those, those dollars and create the jobs? Absolutely. And that's what my specific plan is. But it also says, look, we do need to streamline the permitting process. We ought to have not just a single window. We ought to allow everybody who's applying for a permit a single application on a website and every agency, local, state, county, goes to that same application with the commitment that in, in non-extraordinary circumstances, six months, you'll get an answer. Secondly, we need to invest in research at our two and four year schools, both basic and applied research, as a separate line item in the budget so that we're creating the new ideas, innovation, technology that the private sector can commercialize in a tax environment in which we have investment um, uh, capital available. We need to create the, make sure we have the talent pool that's necessary, the infrastructure to build on our regional assets, broadband, it is important. It's not just a speedy kind of thing. And we need leadership. We need leadership to make all of this happen, to bring the parties together, to make the tough decisions. Thank you, Mr. Horner. That actually brings us to <coughs> the end of our formal questions for the day, but we do want to allow each of the candidates a three minute closing remark block. Um, we'll ask you to give uh, why you believe you're the best choice to be Minnesota's next governor and what type of legacy you'd like people to remember. It's hard to think of being elected and going through your term already, but what type of legacy do you want people to remember you uh, as for your time as Minnesota's CEO? Again, each candidate will have three minutes for the closing remark, and we will start with Mr. Horner. Well, thank you very much. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here to, to lay out the, the differences. And as you see, they are very clear differences but there are also differences in consistency, in continuity. I'm impressed that it took Senator Dayton a decade to change some of his core positions. Representative Emmer seems to do it from debate to debate, and that's not what Minnesota needs. We need a clear vision. We need a clear focus on where we're going. And so let me spell out what I think are the, the major differences. I don't think that, that we are going to grow our way out of a pro budget problem if we don't do the right thing, we can have economic growth. We should have economic growth. But every expert that has looked at this problem, including the Budget Commission two years ago that took a look at it, co-chaired by a conservative legislator, a conservative commissioner of, of one of Governor Plenty's uh, departments, said, we're not going to grow our way out if we don't make the tough decisions. Expenditures are going to overwhelm revenue. We're not going to have extra revenue sitting around in the bank account, but we're also not going to tax our way out of this. We're going to, to reform our way out of it. We're going to make smart decisions. We need tax reform in which we do put the dollars back into the, the economy through investments that you, the job creators, make. When you kill job creators, you kill jobs. And taxing small businesses, not creating true reform, for our great corporations, not allowing the money for investments in research and development and growth in new jobs, not allowing Minnesota to be part of the economy as it is going to be, not the economy as it was, that's a losing proposition. And we can't afford that. So let me tell you what I've laid out, and I hope you do go look at my plan because it is specific. Have I mentioned Horner2010.com? <laughs> Tax reform. We need the dollars to create new jobs, new opportunities for investments, new, new businesses that will grow and create those jobs. Secondly, we do have to have spending cuts. We do need to make government more efficient and effective. And I've laid out some specific spending cuts. But we also need to make investments in education, 
in health care, in our infrastructure, broadband as well as our bricks and mortar and roads and bridges. We need to do all of these things, and we can. And we can do it responsibly, and we can do it in a budget that is under control where dollars are being used more wisely. But we also have to be honest with, with Minnesotans. Look, you may have seen the headline in the morning paper about how all three of us support the Vikings plan. Well, I guess to an extent we do, but I'm the only one that has put details on the table as to how we're going to pay for it. Senator Dayton says, we'll wait until the crisis hits and then hope we can do it. And Representative Emmer says, well, if we can find the money, maybe we'll do it. That's not supporting a Viking stadium. We need to have the courage to say those are important assets. We need to be bold. We need bold leadership. And I need bold voters. So I'm asking you for your support. And I very much appreciate the opportunity to be here with you this morning. Thank you. Thank you, Tom Horner. Next for closing statement, we'll go to Mark Dayton. Who will be the next uh, governor of Minnesota? Who will be the best governor for the future of Minnesota is for, for all of you to decide and for your fellow citizens to decide on November 2nd. I think, I think Minnesota voters are, are very pragmatic. And uh, that's why these debates are excellent opportunities for all of you to, to assess us and decide for yourselves. We, we will lead the state in different directions. And it's for you to decide and others who will make this a better state in a way that best represents your interests and those of your your family and your fellow citizens, because uh, none of us are islands unto ourselves. We're interdependent. You know, government is we the people. It's founded on that premise, and, and that's still all it is, and everything it is. And, and it is a way in which we collectively make decisions that we think uh, ultimately are going to best serve our state and our nation. And, and the, the fact we have different points of view is, is the greatness of our democracy and the greatness of our electoral process. Uh, I have proposed, and, and I, I give Mr. Horner credit also for proposing in, in a fair amount of detail, and you can visit his website, you can visit mine as well, how we're going to balance the next uh, state projected deficit of $5.8 billion. We didn't create that deficit. Nobody likes to raise taxes. I couldn't agree with Mr. Horner more. But the reality is that you, either absent job growth, which will occur hopefully, but slowly the econometric forecast predicts, you have to raise revenues or you have to cut spending. And as you pointed out earlier, the business people, you know how to deal with numbers. 95% of the state budget goes for 48% education, 30% health and human services, 9% property taxes and local government aids, 5% public safety, and 3% debt service. That's 95%. So one of the reasons I think Representative Emmer won't tell us what his budget is going to be is because it'll expose the fiction that somehow this is just going to happen without serious consequence for people that it's not going to happen as Governor Plenty's budget fixes have without raising property taxes. The recent study showed that Minnesota businesses actually pay more in property taxes than they, and then next in sales taxes than they do in corporate income tax. And when property taxes are more than doubled in this state, and to think that, Representative Member, if you want to eliminate local government aids as you propose, that that's not going to raise property taxes all over this state. <coughs> that in the Almanac budget exercise, you said you're going to cut state funding for education, K-12, by 19%. And that's not going to be more overcrowded classrooms, poorer quality education, and higher property taxes as well. It's just fiction. And you deserve the facts. You deserve those facts from all of us. I will raise revenues. I'll do it progressively. And then I'll invest that money first and foremost in education, because that is our future. We can talk about it. We can reform it. But we also need to fund it. That's just the hard truth. You can't cut state funding for education by $1,300 per student in real after inflation dollars and expect better quality education. You won't get it. You can't make tuitions unaffordable all over the state and our public colleges and universities for hardworking Minnesotans and their families, their children, and expect quality workers in your businesses in the future. We need to invest in education. That's our future. Thank you, Mark Dayton. Tom Emmer, your closing comments. Thank you again. Thank you, uh, General Mills and all your partners, uh, sponsors. Thank you, Twin West, for having us. Uh, and thank you, uh, Senator Dayton, uh, Tom. Thank you for allowing me to be part of this. As I said yesterday, it's an honor and a privilege uh, to be with these gentlemen and present our differences of uh, philosophy where we would take this state. And there is a significant difference of philosophy, and I, I do appreciate the attention uh, when I get it on uh, how we differ. And I'm sure we're going to have a lot more of this in the next 68 days, and we'll give you a little bit more as we go along, but we've given you a lot already. Uh, and here's what you need to know. Uh, do we continue business as usual in this state, uh, do, or do we take a new direction? 
Now, uh, some would say, well, you've had a Republican governor. You've had uh, Democrats in the legislature controlling the legislature for the last six years. Uh, how can you say it's a new direction? Look, the ideas that we're talking about in this state probably would not have sold eight years ago or four years ago or maybe even two years ago. God bless uh, our current governor for trying to hold the line and our current legislature for sticking with what has been uh, this Minnesota Miracles model of government from the 1970s. It's a tax and spend model of government. We shouldn't point fingers. We should be talking about how we got here. Good people with good intentions thought that they could make Minnesota a better place. You know what's happened? We now have a government that is so large it is literally starving the private economy. We have lost our balance. The future is not just raising taxes. It's not doing things the way we've done them in the past. Uh, you can't say that you're taxing the wealthy when you're going to hit every small business in the state of Minnesota. And take it from somebody who's been in a small business. I know what that's like. I know what it's like to struggle to meet a payroll on Friday and understand that nobody guarantees me the next one, so it's going to be two more working days till Monday. And politicians for years in this state have been talking about, well, I'm going to raise these taxes and I'm going to take these and cut these. It doesn't work that way. Minnesotans don't have a lot of trust for politicians anymore. Take it from somebody who's been outside of government my whole life and, and been in uh, the uh, state legislature for the past six years. I think we're more connected to Main Street than my colleagues. Here's what people in Minnesota are expecting from their government. They're expecting their government to take a hard look at itself, take a hard look at how it delivers services that people expect, make sure those are done efficiently, and then guess what? Put people back in charge of their future, put people back in charge of their opportunities. What I want to be known as is the guy who was part of a group that created the new Minnesota miracle, the Minnesota miracle of the 21st century. That is where you have Medtronic expanding in Minnesota, 3M expanding in Minnesota. You have Marvin Windows expanding in Minnesota. That would be the Minnesota miracle that we should all strive for. That will bring jobs to this state that our families so desperately need. That will once again drive our economy and pay for the things we expect from government. Thank you for having us here today. Thank you very much. Let's give our candidates a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, man. Tom, thank you. Thank you, Mark. Thank yeah. You. Mark, a pleasure. I want to thank I want to thank each of our candidates for sharing their valuable time today to educate the business community and the voters on their positions and so many issues that are important to Minnesotans across this state. Thank you so very much. If you'd like more information about the campaigns, I know each campaign has a table set up to your right and staff over there that would be happy to assist you. I'd also like to take just a moment to thank our sponsors again, our premier sponsor, Lockridge Grindle Now and PLLP, our generous, our gold sponsor, Parker Rosen, LLC, our silver sponsor, Medica, our bronze sponsor, Center National Bank, Circadian, Liberty Diversified International, Pawn America and Payday America, and Excel Energy. Also, again, thanks to our Comcast sponsor, Please join Twin West on September 10th for the kickoff of our legislative breakfast series and have a fantastic day. Thanks very much. Well Thank you, Joe.